Three, two, one. Where's the parachute? Where's the rock? Oh, it went off. Nope, the chute's not out. The chute's <laughs> not out. Oh, that hit hard. Okay, that rocket might be done. The launch pad worked perfectly. Oh my gosh. Hey, the tracking shot was amazing. What do you think? The chances are it's intact enough we could launch it again. The sun's behind you. Okay. What are the chances it's intact enough we can launch it again? Chances. Yeah. What are 20%. we about to walk up on? Okay. I think it's gonna It was fast. I know, I think it's gonna be in like three. It fell really fast. Oh yeah. <laughs> it, it broke a little bit. That was a little bit more intense than the last one. Oh, but was it just the nose cone? Oh, it was way more than the nose cone. The entire upper portion is uh well that's the parachute section of the payload so and that's uh that's nose cone that's basically like a golf pool yeah that's um that's not actually coming out is yeah. the motor still in it, Dang, it hard. oh no oh my gosh i was right it's like three pieces yeah it's basically I'm so this is the section that holds the parachute so last time it slammed to the ground like this but the nose was stuck in the ground and this was fine. Yeah. And everything else was the same. This time I thought I packed this differently, but the entire parachute section, so it came down completely intact and then slammed to the ground. Yeah. That's not glitter. This is just a relic of the past. All right. I keep it. I'm gonna put it on a shelf. Sorry, okay. Shelf. Do you think? Where would the motor have gone? All right, okay, listen, this is my defense. Sometimes you work really hard on a rocket, you spend a lot of, a lot of time, a little bit of money, uh, and you build an amazing vehicle, and it still blows up. Alright, so first of all, we're going to start this off with the changes between RP1 and RP1.1. I was going to make a whole video on it. I started editing it. It was going to be like a 15 minute long video, but it's really just five main changes, so I figured I'd just run through them in the flight video because that's the video people are going to actually watch anyways. Change number one, all of the bulkheads were replaced with aluminum. This is because on the last rocket, they started to separate a little bit, so I replaced that, and instead of just glass packing tape, they're aluminum. Change two, RP1.1 launched on this new launch pad. Instead of a universal setup on a universal launch pad, we 3D printed and built a from the ground up launch pad specifically for RP1.1, and as RP1.1 is a test rocket, this is a test launch pad so that we can learn for the future, which after the first launch, we learned a lot, and so we are retiring this launch pad just like the rocket, so that's good to know. Change number three, it was utilizing a new nose cone and it was actually moved up a little bit, so technically RP1.1 was about an inch taller than RP1. Change number four, RP1.1 uh, had a different version of packing the parachute. Same chute, but it was packed differently um, to help it come out, which obviously didn't work and we'll get to why in a bit. And change number five, I actually can't remember. For some reason I had in my head it was five changes, but really it was only four. So those are all the changes between RP1 and RP1.1, and that is why this rocket is RP1.1. Now, let's get to the failure. <laughs> oh, that hit hard. So this is also RP1.1, sitting in one main core that survived great, um, a launch pad that did phenomenally, um, an upper portion of the booster, which was also... Secondarily, the payload section for the parachute, and a bunch of pieces, some of which are part of the upper portion of the booster, some of which are part of the nose cone, and all in all, 
have seen better days. So I believe I know the cause of the failure. On both launch attempts of RP-1, the same thing happened. Um, the flash uh, was seen in the air, but the rocket didn't deploy the parachute. Now on the first launch, that meant that it landed sideways, the parachute was kind of out, and the nose cone careened into the ground, but all in all it was good and ready to fly again. On launch two, however, the entire upper portion snapped off, um, we kissed the parachute goodbye, and the nose cone was obliterated. Now, I think I've figured out why, and to be completely honest, this is a complete and total engineering oversight on my part. I was stupid. I have no excuse for you on why I overlooked this. I even thought about it at some points and just never did it. That is the motor. Well, let me go get our extra motor. This is an E12 rocket motor inside of a 3D printed casing that allows it to size up to the size it needs to be to fit an RP-1. Oh, there goes a bit of rocket wadding. This casing lets it go up to the size that it needs to be to fit an RP-1, and, well, it works great. You can see I can shake it and it doesn't come out. But when an explosion, there's an explosion going on when the ejection charge goes off. When a straight-up explosion occurs, it's not strong enough to hold that, so I can shake it all I want. I mean, I can't make it fall out, but when an explosion goes off in this chamber to push the parachute out, instead, it fired the motor out the bottom. And so that's why I was able to see the um, ejection charge in the air. It was it firing the motor out. Then it just becomes a lawn dart. The fins point backwards. The rocket tips over, points like this, with no motor in it stabilizing the back. And so it just points straight down, careens into the ground, absolutely demolishing the nose cone, and then it fell over. Like I said, I have absolutely no excuse. This was a complete and total engineering oversight. There should have been some form of mechanism that screwed it onto the bottom, or maybe I put screws in all four sides to screw the two parts together. But because of this, the parachute failed to deploy, and when the parachute failed to deploy, the rocket slammed into the ground. So this is a really short synopsis of what happened because it's really short and simple to explain. I had an engineering oversight. I didn't do something, and it caused the um, failure of the recovery system, and well, last time we got lucky, this time we weren't so lucky, and RP-1 saw its last flight and its last days. This stand was built specifically for this rocket, it won't work for other rockets, so it will sit on this stand, on some shelf in some corner of my room, maybe in my closet or something, just like this, I'll put all the other parts on it, maybe throw some of it away, but it it's done. I can't fly it again, I can't retrofit it, I can't rebuild the top portion, it's just RP-1 is done, and, uh, well, this just means we have to take everything that we learned from RP-1 and build a new rocket. Uh, maybe we'll slap some electronics in it this time, we'll make it go higher, we'll make it go faster. But RP-1 is finished. We, uh, well, <laughs> we can't reuse it, we can't rebuild it, and we're saying goodbye to it. But that was an amazing last launch. It went high, it went fast. Everything worked perfectly except for the parachute, and to be honest with you, it's slamming into the ground was really funny and impressive, but that was a great last launch to send it on. We've learned a lot from this rocket, which is the whole point. It's a prototype rocket. We were supposed to learn a lot, and we've successfully learned a lot. We will carry that into a new rocket and call this over. We are going to um, take all of these pieces and just consider it a relic. If the parachute has no holes in it, I may be able to get it out and use it on the next rocket. Otherwise, it will just be part of the pile of parts for RP-1, but yeah. That's it, RP-1, uh, an amazing rocket with an engineering oversight, uh, a prototype rocket that worked amazingly, um, but that engineering oversight on my part led to its death, and while I had some great times in the first launch, I had some great times upgrading it, upgrading the pad, and it had an incredible second launch, it did ultimately see its last days. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Oh wait, 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 I'm getting ahead of myself. Subscribe, it helps out a ton, it's completely free, and you can change your mind at any time. Also, while you're down there, slap a like on this video um, so that other people can see RP-1 slam into the ground. And uh, while you're down there, comment RIP RP-1. Go ahead and comment that down below, I would appreciate it a lot. And comment, are you excited for the next rocket? What should I do differently? Should we go bigger, uh, bigger motors, higher? What, what should be the next goal? Or should we stick to something like Axis? Or really, what should the general direction be? But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.